Let's talk a little bit about Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky is a linguist and a philosopher. He's now 91 years old and he's had some pretty damn good takes lately uh, that have unfortunately really rattled and shaken up a slice of the American left wing that's very, very anti Joe Biden. So as an example, a few months ago, maybe it was a month ago, Noam Chomsky said, of course, I'm going to vote for Joe Biden and everybody should vote for Joe Biden. And that was the take. And it was not particularly controversial, but there were a lot of people who were very upset with Noam Chomsky saying that he has sold out in some way. But I was glad to hear him say it because there's definitely crossover between Bernie fans and Chomsky fans, and not all of them agree that voting Trump out uh, to replace him with Biden is good. Now, I, I believe that that is good. That is the right decision to make. So does Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky was recently interviewed by Michael Brooks, who has some clips on our channel. If you go back uh, in the archives a little bit and Chomsky said Trump is undeniably the worst criminal in history. And what I like about this is that Chomsky has shown a commitment not to allow the forest to be missed for the trees. When people start getting into, well, you know, back in the 90s, Biden didn't take Social Security cuts off the table. So that means he's running today on cutting Social Security. You know, it's like, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, Biden is not running on cutting Social Security today. Uh, in the 90s, Biden said, I wouldn't preemptively take it off the table in a negotiation. While I disagree with what Biden said in the 90s, that was almost 30 years ago, and he's not running on that now. And Trump is an evil madman who must be removed. Noam Chomsky has been very good at distilling that every time he's asked about this, and he does it here in this interview as well. Let's look at a sort of condensed transcript, and I actually want to read through it because this really matters. Noam Chomsky said, quote, this sounds strong, but it's true. Trump is the worst criminal in history, undeniably. There has never been a figure in political history who was so passionately dedicated to destroying the project for organized human life on Earth in the near future. This is not an exaggeration. People are focused now on the protests. The pandemic is serious enough that we will emerge from it at a terrible cost. The cost is greatly amplified by the gangster in the White House who has killed tens of thousands of Americans, making this the worst place in the world for the coronavirus. We will emerge from the pandemic, but we're not going to emerge from another crime that Trump has committed, the heating of the globe. The worst of it is coming. We're not going to emerge from that. The ice sheets are melting. They're not going to recover. That leads to exponential increase in global warming. Arctic glaciers, for example, could flood the world. Recent studies indicate that on the present course in about 50 years, much of the habitable part of the world will be unlivable. You won't be able to live in parts of South Asia, parts of the Middle East, parts of the United States. We're approaching the point of one hundred and twenty five thousand years ago when sea levels were about twenty five feet higher than they are now. And it's worse than that. The Scripps Oceanographic Institute just came out with a study that estimated that we are coming ominously close to a point similar to three million years ago when sea levels were 50 to 80 feet higher than they are today. Noam Chomsky goes on to say, quote, all around the world, countries are trying to do something about it. But there is one country which is led by a president who wants to escalate the crisis, to race toward the abyss, to maximize the use of fossil fuels, including the most dangerous of them, and to dismantle the regulatory apparatus that limits their impact. There is no crime like this in human history. Nothing. This is a unique individual. And it's not as if he doesn't know what he's doing. Of course he does. It's as if he doesn't care if he can pour more profits into his pockets and the pockets of his rich constituency tomorrow. Who cares if the world disappears in a couple of generations? As far as the government is concerned, we're seeing something pretty interesting. Parliamentary democracy has been around for 350 years, starting in England in 1689 with the so-called Glorious Revolution, when sovereignty was transferred from the royalty to the parliament. The beginnings of parliamentary de democracy in the U.S. came about a century later. Parliamentary democracy is not just based on laws and constitutions. In fact, the British Constitution is maybe a dozen words. It's based on trust and good faith. 
the assumption that people will act like human beings. And then after Chomsky talks a little bit about Richard Nixon and George W. Bush, Chomsky goes back to quote, it goes deep into issues well before Trump, but he is a unique phenomenon. Again, the worst criminal in human history. So his minor crimes are to destroy American democracy and to amplify a pandemic killing over 100,000 people. But those are minor crimes by his standards. What's so important about this is that Chomsky distills the importance of not messing around with these sidebar arguments. What we're seeing is as bad as I and others have been saying much of it, the incompetence, the authoritarian tendencies, the ruined global alliances, the worsening crisis, crisis of climate change while Trump doesn't care. They were all completely predictable from day one, and I was not unique in predicting it. I'm not taking any unique credit for predicting it. This is not a time for maybe I'll stay home or maybe I don't care or I don't really like Biden or whatever. You contribute to the worsening of the problem if you do that. That's how critical this is. And I'm so glad that we are hearing it from Noam Chomsky. We'll have some of these Chomsky quotes on the show's Instagram page at David Pakman show. Make sure you're following us there. Also, make sure you're following me on Instagram at David Pakman. I posted a video of how I now drink water might be interesting to some of you. If you love feeding your intellectual curiosity, but you're always struggling to find the time, check out one of my all time favorite apps called Blinkist. Blinkist lets you consume an entire book on your way home from work. They take thousands of popular nonfiction books, condense each one into text or audio that you can get through in just 15 minutes and you get all of the important core ideas and information from that book. It's perfect if you don't have enough time to do all the reading you want to do or if you just want to sample a book before you buy the entire thing. I recently read A Brief History of Time, of course, by the great Stephen Hawking. This is a book that I have been aware of for so long and other things got in the way. And it was fantastic to check it out on Blinkist. Blinkist has books on politics, philosophy, science. They have 27 different nonfiction categories and a subscription is only about eight bucks a month and you get the entire library. But you can try it totally free and get 25 percent off a subscription when you go to Blinkist.com slash Pacman. I've put the link right underneath this video.